Okay, so <clears throat> we've got to um, drill a hole uh, through this tubing, uh, through there and also one there. We've got two holes. Uh, and uh, we want them to be go you know, directly through the centre of the tubing. Exactly. So how do we set it up on the drill table? Well, the exact overall width of that is 44 millimetres wide. So from the centre of the block to the edge, which is nicely machined for setting out, is exactly 22 millimetres. So how do we get from 22 millimetres? We want to set up a little sliding rail here makes life a lot easier. So how do we get that exactly 22 millimetres from the centre line of the drill bit, which is the inference? Well, I use simple arithmetic here, and we use what you've got, but I've got a 4 millimetre diameter drill bit, so I just set the table up, the drill table up at the right height, so that the drill bit comes down, you know, there. Okay. Uh, and then I get a piece of this merchant bar. Now, this, in this case, obviously this is very flexible, but this is exactly 20 millimetres wide. So this is the way I set it up. I mean, you know, you can check it if you like. But some of them are advertised as 20 millimetre, but they're not. Uh, but this one happens to be exactly 20 millimetres, which is a bit fortuitous, isn't it? So we set that there. So half the diameter of that is 2 millimetres. Uh, and the plus that is 20, 22, which is what we want. So what we're going to do is set up from the edge of the drill bit to the edge of that um, sliding guide to be exactly on this thing. Now I've got, I've got to tell you, I already cheated and I already set this up, but can you hear that? Oh, shut up. Try to tell the sulfur crested cockatoos to shut up somebody. No, they're not looking. If you listen, you hear that the drill bit, when it comes around, is just gracing the edge of that piece of steel. Maybe you can't hear that, but when you hear, you can. When you're standing here, you can hear it quite well. Uh, and that's how you do a lot of things with setting up steel, by the way, by feeling, by hearing, you know. So it's just touching the edge there. That's exactly 20 millimeters wide with a vernier, which is bloody accurate. So we know that the centre line of that drill is now, and we've got something in there, it's so now bang, right in the middle of that, you can get my arm out of way, right in the middle of that V block, see? And that's how you do it. Okay, next step is to get these tangs uh, at 90 degrees to the centre line. So. <coughs> Excuse me for being simplistic, but I just measured down. Forty-two point five. Forty-two point five five. That'll do me. Okay, so there we are. We've got the tangs sitting there nice and parallel to the table. We've got the drill brace set up so the center line of the drill comes down and you can actually see it. it comes down. So next we're going to mark a hole. Now we come in seven millimeters from the end of the tube. Okay, those tangs are sticking out six millimeters and the hole is seven millimetres in from the end of the tube. Don't ask me why, it's just that's the way it worked out on the CAD program. Okay, uh, now this is uh, called a centre drill because it's used to drill the centre. It's a fairly thick drill bit that tapers down to a fine point. Okay, we've got a, I've got a four millimetre because it's, it's reasonably stout <coughs> at that length and it'll get through the piece, uh, good for a start. If you go smaller to bigger, if you haven't got a centre drill like those fellas there, you don't want to buy one. You get a, a punch, a centre punch, and punch a hole there. Getting that one at the same height, you have to measure that off, off of a flat surface with a steel rule or something.
Okay, that's one done. Excuse me, I have to hold it properly. Two holes. Dead central. Okay, now <clears throat> this drill bit is 5.5 millimeters. Alright. Yep. That's what it is. I'm using 5.5 millimeter because that's the size <clears throat> to uh, tap a thread through the tangs, you know, and. Uh, That's going to happen, so uh, let's make it real. We're going to be putting um, a quarter inch UNF die, or tap through here, sorry. <coughs> Tapping a thread into these tangs, that's 5.5 millimeter. So that hole will do at this stage at 5.5, and then we'll pull the tangs out and clean out the outer holes, do a quarter inch, 6.35, okay? Okay, uh, well we just drilled a 5mm um, hole through there, we've got a 5.5mm hole through there, I'm just using a drill bit just to hold that in location for the moment. Now, um, you can use a drill bit to do this, uh, but I'm going to be putting a, a bit of 5mm high speed spill, spill through there as a locking pin. So I'd like this to be a nice uh, alignment and no burrs and stuff. So this is a, a, a five millimeter reamer. Uh, you may remember the um, 15 mil reamer that I used earlier. Uh, this one's small. I'd normally use a hand um, reamer like this with a handle. This should be gentler. Uh, but it just so happens I've only got a machine tool here, so it fits in a chuck. Um, I'm going to clean up these holes and get them all aligned through, okay? Marvellous thing, a rechargeable drill, by the way. Uh, variable speed, high torque. Just make sure you don't snap off any tools. There we go. That way. Now, uh, <clears throat> before we finish the actual locking tang in the middle, we'll make the hole bigger so that the bit of slop that's put in it will make up for that, you know. Uh, but theoretically, observe nice um, fit. And that will be the locking bar on this tool. Um, if you recall, the uh, prototype tool. We use the um, quarter inch bolt, it's fine, you know, it's just a 5mm diameter a hardened steel, uh, that's high speed steel actually. I have some lengths of it laying around, so it's very strong, so more than adequate for the shear stress and twisting involved here. And also it takes out less material in the tang here, so you get most more overall strength, you know, so. Is there a difference? Not a great deal. It'll work either way. It's just that's better than that. Yeah? That's better than that. But if you've got quarter inch bolts, use them. But if you're going to use 5 mil, it's getting onto the stage in the overall stressor involved in this particular tool that this should be made out of high tensile steel. Something in the order of 600 megapascal plus, and this is, you know, some thousands of megapascals. Yeah. Obviously, it's more adequate. Okay, we, we've got a, um, if you remember, we've got a 5.5mm hole this end of the, uh, the tang. 
we'll call it, officially, called the tag front. Um, this is a quarter inch UNF die. Use United National Fine Threads, please, or whatever you're doing, use fine threads, uh, because you, you get more threads through the thickness of the material and this is why by the way I've used 5mm thick material here. Use a bit of lube uh, when cutting with a tap. Now this is a drill press um, that's had the spring released. See that? You put it back on again afterwards. It's just a nice little drill press so you've got a bigger one there if you know. If you already used this is a 12mm chuck. Half inch chuck. So, um, or 13 mil shorter. And this holds the tap dead straight, well dead perpendicular to the work, goes straight in the hole and comes out the hole the same way. That gives you a good clean cut of the thread and it also means that this die won't break because when you're working with small dies you tend to go through a lot of them, you know, break and so we go forward a bit, we go back a bit, we go forward a bit, more, we go back a bit. We're knocking the little chips of metal off. Forward a bit, back a bit. Forward a bit. There we go. Now there's the um, bolt we're going to use. Uh, observe this bolt. It has a plain chunk at the top, so you may need to get a longer bolt, you know, but they're going to be cut off. You know? So we now thread that through there. God, isn't that magic? Look at that. A little tight, but I'm not going to clean up. I, I want it tight. This bolt's only going to go in once. Okay. There we go. Well up. Now that'll thread through there, up to the shoulder of the bolt there. It'll stick out through there, and then we'll cut it off and then grind it to that flat with the bottom of that surface. And the bit that sticks out, which is about uh, eight millimeters long, I think, from memory, we grind that off. The bit, by the time we grind it down to the size, then there's just a short stub sticking out from the top of that. So you get that L-shaped thing going, and it's actually a very short um, lever on the end. It's called the, okay? That's the whole principle of it. And that means once you get your locking tang down the middle uh, here sandwich between our two pieces um, it's a mighty tough tool you know there's a lot of holding power up, which is exactly what we want okay we just want to remove the sleeve and don't worry about it. thank you okay here we are a little bit of pre-assembly um, you begin to get the idea of what's happening here these will be screwed in the excess will be cut off the inside and the outside will then be ground off to form the jaws the locking pin uh, this is where it's handy of a reamer when you've got it all together <coughs> these will just move about slightly and steel does not know the meaning of approximate it's going to be, you know, within fractions of a millimetre it makes a difference so we'll ream that through again until we get a nice uh, workable fit ok so there you go so yeah well, we've got to cut the thread on here, but we're almost done. Yeah, that's it. Not a lot in it, really, is it? <laughs>